So by now, if you're a TV smart lighting enthusiast, you've probably already heard that Govi has expanded their new AI gaming sync box, which I reviewed a few months back, into the living room. And with this being an extension of their pre-existing hardware, as you'd expect, many of the specs have been carried over. The biggest key takeaway that most people are going to focus on, especially if you're a gamer, as I am, is that the Gobi sync box caps at 4K 60Hz. While the LightMe TV sync box, which I reviewed a few months back as well, is actually capable of 4K at 120Hz. Well, that's easy. LightMe supports 4K at 120, while the Gobi sync box only supports 4K at 60Hz. So the LightMe Fantasy sync box is better, right? Well, unfortunately, after you reach the end of this video, you're going to understand why I say that this simple question is not as easy to answer as it appears on the surface. Now, some of this has to do with the fact that the Gobi Sync Box can be boosted from 4K60 to 4K120, but there's also a number of unexpected advantages that I've stumbled upon for the Gobi Sync Box over LightMe. Nevertheless, at the end of the day, the end game and the hope is that you walk away from this video better equipped to make the best informed decision based on your TV smart lighting needs today, as we'll be taking a close look at the Govi TV AI sync box and drawing comparisons against the LightMe Fantasy 3 sync box, as well as the Govi T2 camera kit. Whether you're a gamer, a TV shows and movie streamer, or some combination thereof, we're gonna approach things from all perspectives as we dive in on three of the most modern and popular TV color syncing light kits on the market today. <laughs> So to kick things off, we're going to take a look at some of the key specs side by side for the Govi and LightMe sync boxes. I put together a cheat sheet here that I'll leave up for you to read through as I call out a couple of major highlights. The first, as I just mentioned, is that Govi caps at 60 hertz at a 4K resolution out of the box, and LightMe can go up to 120 at 4K. LightMe also features 72 beats per meter versus Govi 60 and 5 HDMI ports to Govi's 4. However, the Gobi box can reach a max of 240 hertz at a 1080p resolution, while LightMe caps at 120 regardless of resolution. And when it comes to software, I gave the Gobi box a score of 4, with 5 being the highest, versus a score of 2 for LightMe. Because not only does the Gobi app not require a second app for voice control, but it also supports up to 123 scenes versus LightMe's 12. I also took into consideration that the Govi app also features DreamView ecosystem that allows you to sync your entire room with your TV, while LightMe currently does not, as well as the fact that the Govi app offers much more customizability for things like segment control, as well as some very crucial settings for video mode specifically, which we'll discuss in more details in a little bit. Now the Gobi AI sync box for 55 to 65 screens hit the market first, but the 75 to 85 inch model is now available for purchase as well. Unfortunately, neither of these models are going to feature the light bars as with the PC version. As you can see, this TV specific unit comes with more of a bluish and yellowish green color scheme to better differentiate from the PC version. At a glance, here's what's included inside. We have the typical user manual and service card paperwork, the AC power brick, reinforcement clips for the light strip corners, two braided HDMI 2.0 cables, the 60 light beats per meter light strip, the sync box itself, which matches the PC version in dimensions, both supporting three in and one out. However, you'll notice that the TV model only features one USB-C port because this kit doesn't use the light bars. Bringing the LightMe sync box into the picture for good measure, you can see that it's much more compact and features four in and one out, though I've never really been a fan of the side light strip port design in order to achieve a smaller footprint. In favor of devoting more time to performance and features, I won't go too in-depth on the setup and the installation process, as it's virtually identical to the process for the PC model, and you can find official instruction videos over on Gobi. But here's a snapshot of how crazy things have become behind my TV. We have the T2 light strip on the far left, followed by the light bee in the middle, and then we have the Gobi AI TV strip on the far right. Now the AI component for the Gobi PC version has also been carried over for the TV model, which I covered off on in my previous video. But to summarize, the sync box features an algorithmic chip, which allows for dynamic custom effects in addition to TV color tracking. So you can experience different visual simulations while performing in-game actions, such as reviving a comrade, administering a health pack, skydiving from a plane, and so on. Some of these effects can even be customized inside the app as well. But the biggest thing holding this feature back right now is that it's game specific and only eight games are currently supported. I personally think that support for more single player story driven blockbusters like Cyberpunk and the Spider-Man franchise would help this better take off. But it's a welcome addition nonetheless 
and something that no other Syncbox manufacturer has yet to duplicate. Getting back to color tracking specifically, I've tested the Gobi TV Syncbox extensively straight out of the box and it performs extremely well within the advertised specifications. Although when HDR is brought into the equation, I did notice the very same aberration that occurs for the Lightning Syncbox pops up for the Gobi Syncbox as well, though it's not quite as glaring. And just as a reminder, that issue is that when HDR is active, reds that appear on screen are represented with more of an orangish color tint on the backlight itself. But because the Gobi software allows for adjusting the color tint and calibration, I was able to largely counter this issue resulting from HDR. And as a result, as you can see in this example, the Gobi light strip, though it's not quite as bright as with LightMe, it maintains much better color accuracy when HDR is active. This was a huge game changer for me because red is a primary color. And when that gets thrown off, it affects so much more. Browns, beiges, tans, yellows are all affected. This HDR issue for LightMe over time has become more and more egregious. And without any software modification features, I was forced to simply shut off HDR altogether. This means that any HDR game or media content on the PS5 was absent that wider range of contrast levels. This HDR problem also exists on the Xbox Series X, but because you can use Dolby Vision for some games, unlike the PS5, it's a bit more tolerable. Straight out of the box for the Gobi Sync Box, at a 4K resolution on my LG C1, I was able to hit 60 FPS at 60 Hz. And at a 1080p resolution, I was able to hit 120 locked. Because as with the LightMe Box, neither of these units can handle VRR. However, getting HDR back on my TV with the Gobi Sync Box with more accurate colors, but at the cost of a 4K 60 cap, just didn't sit well with me. So I picked up this 8K HDMI 2.1 splitter and linked it up with the Gobi Sync Box and I'm now able to hit 120Hz at a 4K resolution. The quick rundown on the setup is as follows. There's a couple of steps here, so bear with me. First, I ran an HDMI 2.1 cable from the PS5 to the single splitter input port, and then I ran another cable from the splitter output one port directly to a port on the TV. Next, I ran another HDMI cable from the second output port on the splitter to input port one on the Gobi sync box. Note that the cable running from the splitter to the sync box will need to be downscaled to 1080p in order for the color sync to work. Once that's all set, you can then add up to two more devices using the remaining two input ports on the sync box. To do so, you'll need to run a cable from the single Gobi sync box output to another free port on the TV itself. And then from there, you can simply plug in your other devices directly into the sync box, such as a Nintendo Switch or a Steam Deck. But do keep in mind that these additional devices will only be able to run at a max of 4K at 60Hz, which is perfectly fine for these handhelds. So to summarize, this setup will allow for one console at 4K 120 and two additional devices at 4K 60 max. And all cables must be 2.1, except the ports that are being used for the two lower spec devices. You could get away with using HDMI 2.0 cables for those. No, this is nowhere near as turnkey of a solution as the HDMI 2.1 sync box for LightMe. But because of the improved accuracy with HDR, the richer saturation in general, and DreamView, I think I'm going to be primarily running with this Gobi sync box setup for the foreseeable future. There's also the benefit of VRR with this AK splitter. Now the backlight performance will be compromised if VRR is active but I haven't experienced any compromises to the screen image itself. No flickering or stuttering. So in cases where I want VRR, I'll run this setup as normally, but I'll change the backlight from video to a scene mode, or I'll shut the sync box backlight off altogether and rely on the Gobi T2 backlight for color sync. Sort of a best of both worlds kind of solution, maximum color accuracy when I want, or maximum unhindered performance at the cost of an accuracy drop for the T2. Now, to better highlight skin tone performance between the three units, which is one of the greatest challenges for any color matching system, I pulled this particular scene here. Right off the bat, you're going to notice that LightMe and the T2 are noticeably brighter, but my eyes are telling me that the Gobi AI sync box is much more accurate than the others. Demo.
All in all, I'd summarize my thoughts and experience with these two sync boxes as follows. Light Me gets all of the credit in the world for releasing the world's first 2.1 box, and it's more acute and snappy than Govee's with the higher B density. However, as compared to the Govee sync box, the colors often feel more muted and washed out to my eyes. The TV synchronization feature is also a huge plus over Govee, allowing for turning on and off the device in line with the TV. However, the Govi sync box in general has more vibrant and richer colors and better accuracy across the board, largely due to the suite of customization settings. And the software, alongside the DreamView ecosystem, is just so far ahead right now that it leaves a lot to be desired when considering the alternative. However, the native 2.0 ports for Govi also leaves a lot to be desired, though this may not have been too much of a surprise if you honed in on the wording in my previous video for the PC model. Nevertheless, hopefully you guys can better see where I'm coming from now when I say that Light Means 2.1 Tech won't necessarily make it the clear favorite for everyone. I respect and appreciate all of these units because when there is variety and competition, the consumer always wins. Right now, unfortunately, there exists no HDMI sync box that can support 4K at 120 plus VRR, plus smart TV video app support. So if you're a stifler for this, or you want to squeeze every bit of tech out of your console or PC, and you're willing to live with some delay and less accuracy, then by all means, hold on to your T2 camera system if you already own it, or definitely pick that up in favor of a sync box, because that is truly a plug and play solution, and there are a lot less things to worry about. On the other hand, if you're a movie or TV watcher more than anything else, streaming content from a video source such as a Fire Cube, or you mainly game with the Switch docked or a handheld PC, I would actually recommend the Govi Sync Box over LightMe and the T2, because in addition to richer colors and accuracy with HDR, you'll also have CEC and ARC support, which LightMe unfortunately does not. However, if you're a hardcore gamer looking for a simple turnkey setup, then the LightMe Fantasy 3 is probably your best bet. Just make sure you're willing to live with the HDR and VRR compromise and more limited software and support. Sidestepping really quickly, I also want to point out that Govi is also offering a PC software solution for color matching as well that doesn't require a camera or a sync box. Utilizing the free Govi desktop app, you can group devices and sync them as one using DreamView. It has its own mapping feature as well that allows you to map individually addressable segments and it's very intuitive and works really well. The Gobi Gaming Light Strip G1 for monitors is available now and it's specifically designed to run with this desktop app. However, the main drawback for utilizing software versus a sync box or a camera is that you can run into DRM issues depending on the content. And finally, getting back to the products at hand, if you're a hardcore gamer and you like to tinker, and assuming this AK splitter setup doesn't sound too intimidating, I think you'll be happy with the results, as you'll be able to take advantage of the 4K 120 with some of the highest level of accuracy on the market utilizing HDR and Dolby Vision. And as previously mentioned, when you do want VRR, you can simply shift from video to a scene mode for passive lighting while you game. If you guys are interested in any of the items shown throughout this video, make sure to check out the description. If you have any specific follow-ups or concerns, make sure to drop me a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one.